My chemistry of cooking class is a general education class that we have here at American University. It's targeted towards non-science majors, um, kids who maybe normally are frightened off by science and frightened off by chemistry. And today we're going to be talking about the chemistry of macaroni and cheese. Who has made a non-boxed version of macaroni and cheese before? No Kraft, no Velveeta. I love teaching uh, chemistry of cooking uh, because it's my chance to proselytize chemistry. Um, I, I see chemistry everywhere. I'm a chemist, so it's what I do, it's what I see naturally. And there's a big disconnect between regular people and chemists. Um, and one of the things that I, I love to do with this course is show all the students how they are actually chemists anytime they step foot in a kitchen or sit down to eat food. So who can tell me something about this reaction of cooking pasta, all right? And think about it in terms of reaction energy diagrams. And so I really love to cook at home, and I'm really interested about the science of cooking. So I thought, maybe I can do this for a general population. Maybe I could do this for our freshmen and sophomores, the kids who are taking our gen ed courses. It's a lot of fun. You do get to cook a lot. Uh, his demonstrations are a lot of fun since we actually get to eat what he cooks. Don't expect to come in and have it be easy. There is still chemistry involved, which is one thing we weren't expecting, but afterwards it, it gets easier as you start to understand it. I've never like a, been a super science person, but all these sciences I kind of find chemistry the most like interesting, and I think I found it much more interesting in that like I can apply it to things that I actually do instead of just knowing how to like balance equations and you know those kinds of things, which kind of bonds molecules make. I think it's much more interesting to be able to apply it and like be able to use it too, not even just like to know how things I already do work, but to be able to improve the cooking that I do. All right, Parmesan melts at high temperatures, and you guys know the difference. If you pick up a block of Parmesan, it's nice and, and, and solid, right? And, and mozzarella is squishy. Well, there are all sorts of chemicals in food, you know, the, the vitamins, minerals, and proteins, and, and all sorts of stuff. So you can learn about all of those. Um, but chemistry is also about change. And, and what cooking does is it not only tells you what's there, uh, but it also tells you how the molecules in food change as you cook them. And I think that's a big part of chemistry. Okay, and a lot of times too, when you watch uh, like Italian cooking shows, they will add a little bit of the pasta water to it, to, to whatever sauce they're making. The pasta water has uh, some starches flowing through it and the starch helps to thicken the sauce that they're making. Uh, throughout the semester, we do different demos like making jelly, uh, we, we make uh, ice cream at the end of the, uh, liquid nitrogen ice cream at the end of the semester. Uh, we sear steaks, uh, we cook eggs, so all sorts of fun stuff. Like we made pancakes the other day and um, all my other friends didn't know why there were bubbles in it, but me and my friend who, are, who is also in this class knew about the bubbles and whatnot. Um, the, the one thing I hope my students take from this class um, is just a natural curiosity. I want them to go home and I want, I want them to play around in their kitchens and try new things and think about what it is that they're doing while they're changing one variable or another, whether it's uh, adding a little bit of extra butter or making a vinaigrette or, or whatever it is they're doing. I want them to think a little bit about the chemistry of what they're doing, but I also want to embolden them to try things, to try experiments uh, in their kitchen.